Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has not taken nothing? Can a bird fall into a snare upon the earth where no net or gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to his servant, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? This is a word against the whole family. To those God has placed his hand upon, those which he has delivered. He's speaking to his own people here. I have done a work in you, and I have chosen you, and I have blessed you. You're my family. I'm going to deal with you. Unlike I would deal with anyone else, because whom I love I chasten. This is a sign of my love. Therefore, I will correct you for iniquity. Two cannot walk together unless they are agreed. Not walk with you, not do with you what I want to do with you, unless we are one, unless we're walking in agreement. The controversy God has with the evangelical church of Sweden is one word, one issue. Apathy. He said, I can't walk with you. In spite of the call for revival, in spite of all of it, he said, I see in my church, those who are my family, look to the cults and look to dead formal churches and say to them with a pointed finger, you have a form of godliness without power because of apathy, satisfied now to come to the house of God. Go through the motions and the programs, organized to try to find power and authority with society, and you become tolerant. And the word that God hears from the lips of the government and the lips from the church is, we are a tolerant people. No, he said, you're a lukewarm people. You tolerate your government to tell you you can't speak against homosexuality from your pulpit. And no one is falling on their knees and using the weapon of prayer to bring down those strongholds. No tears there and no anguish. The lion is roaring in Sweden. This is the roaring lion out of hell. He is roaring as he has never roared in this nation, in history. Lion only roars when he has a victim, when he has a prey, and drags him to his nest. And looking at that dead prey, before he devours, he roars in victory. The devil is roaring because he's come against the church of Jesus Christ. I had mighty leaders among you, men with fire in their bones and under their ministry. I raised up prophets young men who were Nazarites were separated from this world. Fiery young Nazarites. Young prophets. I want to set a whole nation on fire. My hand was upon them. I was in this pulpit in the early 70s, right here where I stand. And I saw hundreds of young people burning on fire. I saw holy prophets of God. I heard a sound, a glorious sound. God was raising up a new generation. God's plan for this very day, that these prophets would now be going through your nation. These separated young people would be bringing the message to thousands of young people. They would be traveling the world right now, bringing millions to repentance. But a spirit of apathy fell, a cry for prosperity, and now the cry was a good job, no self-denial, but to get the comfortable house. And we had television introduced into our homes and all the gadgets that bring the whole world into our living rooms. So we let that generation sit in front of television and saturate their minds with filth. Turn prophets into puppets of the enemy. Want to cry and weep? You don't want to spend two hours in prayer meeting. Now it's hours in television. And go to the house of God with no burden of the Lord. You didn't want the Nazarite life for your children. And you've given the wine of prosperity. Don't disturb us. No weeping prophets among us. Give us smooth words. The fields are white to harvest. There's a hungry generation out there ready to turn to Christ. Folks, we've lost a whole generation. Mothers that used to weep for their children, now laughing in front of a television set. Therefore the flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not strengthen his force, neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Do you understand what the prophet is saying? He said, if you don't wake up, church, if you don't deal with this, 
if you will not come back to a broken heart and a contrite spirit, then it will grow weaker and weaker. Your young people who were once strong will grow weak. They will flee from the house of God. And without a spirit of anguish of heart, you will see nothing but weakness, spiritual nakedness, and no armor against the powers of hell. They come to Nehemiah. Hanani, his brother, comes. He said, Jerusalem is in ruins. The walls are down. Everybody's out for themselves. And the scripture says, there's great affliction and reproach on the church. The walls of Jerusalem also are broken down and the gates are burned with fire. How did God revive Jerusalem? How did he build up the walls and the temple? Did God do a new thing in the land? When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Verse 6, Let now your ear be attentive and thy eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before you night and day for the children of Israel, thy servants. Confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. The antidote for apathy is anguish. You come to Times Square Church Tuesday night when we pray and intercede. Church is packed and people in the overflow room, anguishing, crying out to God. When terrorists struck New York City and brought the towers down, that happened on the ninth month, the eleventh day. Here's what I've been told to tell you. For the church of Jesus Christ, this is your spiritual 9-11. It's a call. It's a wake-up. Now, the devil's roaring. The only way it can be awakened. But, young man, there has to be something in you. Saying, I'm willing to sacrifice. Deny myself. For Take up a cross. God, break me. Bring me into that Nazarite life. Let me be one who's awakened. Let me be one who seeks your face. Call your people to prayer. Get on your face before God. You have spoken to us. You've given us our awakening call. You've blown the trumpet. And we will not let the devil roar. Our weapons are mighty through God. To to pull down the stronghold of Satan. Church of Jesus Christ, wake up. Take authority over the powers. But oh God said he's defeated. Take your authority over the power of the lion. Oh lion of Judah. Rise up and protect your name. And meet us once again. Do it again. Perhaps your spirit.